I am going to start this. There's no way I can finish it. I can't finish it today. I'll finish it on Sunday. Uh, how many of y'all? How many of y'all were obedient to the word and you took those pennies and you put it somewhere? My God, you gotta value the word of the Lord. The Lord will tell you to do some strange things sometimes, but it's victory. For He takes the foolish things to confound the wise. Uh, Psalm 107 and 20. I don't think we have uh, our scriptures up today, so. Um, I may call on some of you all, and uh, I'm not going to mess with Pastor Brooks too much tonight. I'll I mess with him a little bit, but I ain't going to mess with him too much. <laughs> uh, Psalm 107 and 20. Psalm 107 and 20. And uh, so you all make sure you get the scripture. You never know, I may, especially your leaders, I may call on you. Ah, Psalm 107 and 20. Uh, Pastor Brooks, what does uh, Psalm 107 and 20 say? He, he sent his word and healed them and rescued them from their destruction. I want to minister from the subject for about uh, uh, 15, 20 minutes on the subject. He sent his word. He sent his word. He sent his word. Sent his word. Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we bless you tonight. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise for what you're doing in this house. Spirit of the living God, I pray that you would increase this breakthrough anointing that's upon us. Uh, that you would allow the anointing that makes prophetic preaching easy be upon me now. Hide me behind the cross and have your way. You be glorified in the strong name of Jesus Christ. We'll be careful to give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. All that agree say it is so. And so it is. with you tonight um, uh, there's been a lot of talk here a lot of chatter uh, a lot of teaching on what the word is a lot of teaching on what the word is you know most of us grew up in the church um, how many of y'all grew up in church I don't want to assume how many who all grew up in the church up in here you know those of us who grew up in the church uh, that there was a strong affinity that they told us to have you know in particular for our Bible and uh, you know, I can remember one time I, I shared this story before. I was uh, outside talking to somebody, and I just set my Bible down on the porch, and the yeah, <laughs> the the moment of God came outside, and she said, "You put your sword on the ground. You put your sword on the ground." I felt so bad. I felt convicted and condemned, and um, I had to you know pick my Bible up. There was a strong affinity that we had, and I was taught that your Bible is the word. I want to present something to you uh, uh, that is uh, potentially problematic with that. Number one, the Bible said in John 1, 1, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Now we historically know when the Bible was assembled, okay? Um, uh, however, if the word was in the beginning and the word was God, then we understand that the word is more than just a book. Okay, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the Paul said to Timothy that the word is profitable for rebuke, exhortation, long suffering and doctrine. Now, we know that when he wrote that letter to Timothy, there was no King James Bible. The Bible had not yet been assembled until uh, uh, A.D. 313 at the Council of Nicaea in Rome. OK, so there was no Bible that was assembled at that time. Um, so then we understand that the word is not just a book. The word is a person. Jesus Christ is the living word. He is the word. So when the Bible talks about the word, it's talking about Jesus. Jesus is the embodiment and the fulfillment of all of the promises of God. Now, I want you to hear this. And, and the reason why do I reiterate this is because we remember when I say but when I listen to people talk in conversation casually out their subconscious, they say crazy stuff. And I'm like, you ain't never said in any sermon I ever preached. <laughs> There's no such thing. I want you to hear me. The word is Jesus. It's a person. The word is Jesus. If I tell you, I say, um, uh, Pastor Brooks, I give you my word. Uh, um, I'm going to do it. I give you. Kevin, I give you my word. What I am saying to you is I give you my promise. So when it talks about the word becoming flesh, it's talking about the promises of God. Jesus Christ was the embodiment 
embodiment of the promises of God. Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of the promises of God. He is the fullness of the promises of God. I want you to hear this tonight. When you understand when you understand the word now, uh, it is that when Jesus speaks out of his mouth that he is releasing word. He is releasing word. So that means that the word has a word. The word has a word. So whenever we are preaching, whenever we are declaring and speaking with one accord, we are speaking the word's word. Okay? So that is what we declare. So then how do we view the Bible? We view the Bible as the word's word. We have a definition for that. Uh, uh, there are two words uh, uh, for word uh, uh, in the Hebrew, and those words are logos and rhema. Logos and rhema. That word logos, uh, I apologize in the Greek, that word logos is where we get the word logic. Okay? That word logos is where we get the word logic. So there are two words for God's word, and that is logos and that is rhema. Why is that important to know? Because logos is the logic of God. It is the lot. Do you know what a, what, what, what a logic is? It, it, it is what, 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 even though you've been praying and fasting for years, why your cousin just won't act right because they got bad logic it's the reason why no matter how much money some people make they do, will not pay their bills on time that's called bad logic it's the reason why there's some people no matter how good the relationship is it's going to end badly because they got bad logic something happens it's the reason why when you talk to some people and after you get finished sharing your heart and they repeat back to you what you say you're wondering how did you get that out of what i just said like were we in the same conversation did you hear what i just said it is because everything you say i want you to hear me everything you say god i pray that you anoint us to hear everything you say only has weight in the mind of a person depending on the condition of their logic. Everything you say only has authority in the cerebrum, in the, the, the cognition of a person's mind depending on their logic. Which means that some people, it don't matter how much sense you make, they still going to do the wrong thing. They're still going to do whatever they want to do. And that is because they have bad logic. There is something going on with this machine. And by the time they go in their ears and it produces an action, it is just absolutely crazy. They have bad logic. So what is, what, what is the importance of the word's word? Of the, anybody got a paper? Who paper Bible say? Anybody got a paper Bible? Paper Bible. That, that, that paper Bible that you have. This represents, I'm not going to close it. This represents the logic of God. When you properly apply it with dispensational and contextual understanding. With dispensational and contextual understanding, when you apply this, this will reframe and refocus and refurbish your logic. Now here's the problem. When you got a church with high prophecy and no logic, is you give people word, but by the time it gets into their logic, the logic is faulty. So it cannot become applicable in their actions. Because you got high praise breaks and no word. Is this making any sense? Logos is logic. Then what is Rhema? Rhema is a specific word for you that comes through the prophetic word, through painting, through a dance, through all the above. That is a specific word directly to you. So what is the relationship between logos and rhema? Some of us love rhema and we hate logic. We love prophecy and don't study the Bible. And the danger of that is logic is the only thing that trains my discernment. So anything that sounds like rhema, You'll be falling out under a word, having no idea you're being prophesied to by a witch. <laughs> because the logos interrupts, disrupts, and reconstructs my logic. What is the relationship between uh, logos and rhema? We were in the car, and this is why I was making all that noise, because I was, I was saying, Holy Ghost, help me to explain this. Logos, <laughs> like, you are going through a lot of changes. <laughs> I'm just hoping. Oh, you cut them. 
Logos is the well. Rhema is the bucket. Logos is the well. Rhema is the bucket. The Lord showed me that in the spirit. That when you get a rhema word that's specific to you, it must be drawn from the logos. Now here's the danger. Is you celebrate the bucket, but you don't check the well. See, anybody that comes, that's why you got to be careful to be, some of y'all too thirsty. You drink anything. You're too thirsty. And so the first person that come to you with a bucket, a cup, you ready to drink. Can I tell you something? You got to be careful what you put in your spirit. You got to be careful who you allow to prophesy to you. You got to be careful who you allow to lay hands on you. Make sure that it's the word of the Lord. You need evidence that it is the word working in you, which means I need to see the logic of God in you. So then we got to find out, well, what is the fruit of the logic of God? How do I identify the logic of God? Because I know some of y'all real deep and you just I can see a devil through the wall. I see the devil on the third floor. I know you real deep and I know you can see in the spirit. But can I tell you something? You have got to make sure that the foundation of all discernment, the foundation of all your gifting, the foundation of all your prophecy, the foundation of all your theology, the foundation of all your eschatology, the foundation of all your soteriology, the foundation of all of your belief system, everything that you believe is founded upon the logic of God. It is when I have a well-established logic that I have well-produced discernment. And when I have well-produced discernment, I have a well-produced diet, which means I don't eat everything that somebody put on the table. I want you to hear this. Glory to God. It is the divine logic of God, the sequence of God's thoughts. My spiritual children will tell you this. My real spiritual children, they'll tell you this. My spiritual children, no shade, no tea. My spiritual children will tell you this. Pastor, you know, uh, uh, Pastor Jody was talking to me one day, and he said, um, they were, uh, they were uh, sitting around and imitating me. <laughs> we were all out, we were uh, at a gathering at a, 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 a suite, penthouse suite downtown, and we were all talking, and uh, Pastor Tebony, Pastor Jody, and Pastor Kevin, they were all making fun of me. It was like, you know, when Bishop <laughs> doesn't really like something that you're doing, he comes to you in a very fatherly way, and he says, I want you to reconsider that perhaps you're not making the best option for your life. Now, have you considered all of the ramifications of what that will produce and how that will? I want you to really think about that and process that. Do you really? He said, by after five minutes, and I'm like, Bishop, I'm not going to do it. I'm just not going to do it. Just, it's, just stop, please. They said, Pastor Tebony, she's like, why do you do that? I said, because it is important to me that you understand the way that I think more so than what I think. Because when I'm not present, you can process my thought pattern and you can produce results that I will produce. Logic is God transmitting the way that he thinks. Rhema is what he thinks. And some of us, that's the difference between the children of Israel knowing God's actions and Moses knew his ways. Moses had God's logic. See, when you only know God's actions, and you know him by his actions, you need him to keep doing stuff to believe him. When you know his way, even though he ain't moved for you yet, you know he'll make a way out of no way, because you know his nature. You know, you, you've seen it before, and beyond what I've seen it before, I understand his pattern. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want you to catch this. Logos and rhema is important. Now watch this. If you want to understand logos, the logic of God, he said, what I'm going to do for you, I want you to understand this so much. Hallelujah. That I'm going to come down through 40 and two generations, wrap myself in flesh. I can't wait to preach Jesus. I started the Jesus series this Sunday. I can't wait. I just love preaching Jesus. Wrap myself in flesh and dwell among you. Now watch this. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ being the embodiment 
of God's logic, Jesus Christ being the fullness of the Godhead bodily, if you understand Jesus, you understand the logic. If you build a relationship with the text, you begin to reconstruct the logic. You reconstruct your thought pattern to come in alignment with the mind of Christ. Now watch this. Hallelujah. So then let's understand the word. Can I share with you some facts about the word? Number one, the word burstability. Somebody get me 2 Chronicles 20 and 20. Somebody else get me St. John 12 and 24. The word births stability. If you see a Christian and they look sanctified and they look saved and they shout and speak with other tongues, but their life is so inconsistent, that is a logic problem. That's a logic problem. And I know you think this ain't spiritual. And I know you think this ain't deep. And I know you think that the only thing God wants to tell you through the prophet is just praise him, just praise him, just praise him. But can I share something else with you? After you get done praising, praising, dancing, 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 you got to go home and make some better decisions. I want you to live better. Look at your neighbor and say, I want you to live better. Second Chronicles 20 and 20, what does it say? And they rose early in the morning uh -huh. and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat, stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. Watch this. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, that they should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army, and to say, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endured forever. I want you to hear this. Hold on a second. Before he instructed them to praise, he instructed them to listen. It is important that your worship and your praise is produced from instruction. Your worship and your praise. And I'm going to keep listening. Somebody say, oh, Bishop, be talking about stability all the time. I'm going to keep doing it until the saints get stability. Absolutely. You best believe it. You best be believing. I'm going to keep on preaching it until the saints get it. Because I'm not going to preach around what you live. It is God's will that you own property. It is God's will that you pay your card note on time. It is God's will that you pay your phone bill on time. It is God's will that every card that you have is paid off, not repossessed. That ain't victory. God wants you to have the victory in your life. Somebody shout hallelujah. He wants you to have the victory. And how do you have the victory? The logic of God. Is the logic of God present in the way you date? Is the logic of God present in, in who you select? Is the logic of God evident in your appetite? Because some of you, you don't want a man of God. You don't want a man of God. You don't want a daughter of Zion. You want Megan the Stallion. You don't want a man of God. You want a hood nigga. That's what you want. And the reason why you want that and the reason why you chase after that is because of certain brokenness from your past. Oh, come on through here. The reason why you chase after that with this toxic masculinity that some of y'all chase after and you're going to miss out on what God has for you chasing after toxic masculinity. You need deliverance from the rejection of your childhood. I ain't scared of you. I'm going to say it again. You need deliverance. I said it. God did not call you to be a gold digger. And some of you don't even know what gold is. Because you're chasing after new money. Come on, Zion. Instead of realizing that real gold is potential that's in the power of a man's belly. That's in the power of that girl's belly. And you can pull it out if you have wisdom.
Number two, the word level of a church reveals its maturity. If you go to a church and all they do is shout, all they do is shout, all they do is shout, and when the preacher get up and talk, don't nobody know what he's talking about. He don't even know what he's talking about. He, he's a shut up so we can shout. Because the people ain't come to hear him. They came to shout. So they waiting for the end for him to sit down. And then they hear the music. Up. <laughs> what he preach? I don't know, but baby, we danced. <laughs> baby, that choir song. They come for the choir and for the dance. No word. They remember what the choir sang. How can I forget what he's done for me? I won't forget, forget, forget. Yeah. <laughs> they are not there for the word. And can I share a secret with you? Oh, don't you say that. <laughs> they had no intention of, of, of it being a word church. Because we can look at who you chose for the pastor to tell what your intentions were. It's a value system. And guess what, Zion? When you don't have word, glory to God, when you don't have word in that church, we can tell. Because they shout and then they fight in the parking lot. And nobody has a victory. And everybody knows everybody's birthmark. And let me be clear. We don't do that in this church. I said we don't do that in this church. If you are not in covenant agreement with that person, you shouldn't be sleeping with them. Did I say that? Yes, I did. If you are not in covenant with that person, you shouldn't be sleeping with them. They should not know what your birthmark look like. That ain't logical. It ain't logical. It ain't logical to sleep with everybody you see. That's not logical. It ain't healthy. And, and people hate for you to talk like this. Could you think a mask gonna protect you from STDs? as silly as, as the, in the church I grew up in the girls would have a, a head covering on and a short skirt uh, they would have a head covering on and they skirt be up to here your head is covered but your thighs are out <laughs> this girl just take the head covering off it's a coaster <laughs> it's a doily that's, that's furniture <laughs> the head don't even fully be covered the doily be back here It's a yarmulke. <laughs> the word level reveals the maturity of a church. Number three, the word comes with faith in it. I said the word comes with faith in it. When it's an authentic word from the Lord, nobody has to keep convincing you to believe it. When it really came from God, it comes with faith already in it, which means that you are re-energized by that word. Even when you don't feel like it, you are constantly re-energized by that word. It's quiet in this church. Which means we don't have to keep reminding you, keep telling you what God said, to keep re -engage. Nobody has to do that for you. Because when they say word from the Lord, the word comes with faith already in it. Which means when you feel like giving up and quitting, the word reinforces itself in your belly. And you'll find yourself re-engaging the warfare even when you feel like giving up. I can't quit because I got a vision in my spirit. And it's more real than what I'm currently in right now. I already see it before I see it. Which means I can praise him in the midst of what I'm in. That's the reason why you need a, 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 a praise that is birthed from the word. Because any praise that ain't birthed from the word won't last. Yeah, yeah. Once upon a time in the body of Christ, 
we wouldn't have, and we have awesome musicians here tonight. Awesome. Just fantastic. But once upon a time in the body of Christ, we didn't have to let the musicians play for 30 minutes before something would hit you and hijack you. Once upon a time, the power would hit somebody and the musicians would have to catch up with you. Y'all don't even know what I'm talking about. The power of God would hit somebody and they would tear up the whole row. Can I tell you something? And it wasn't coerced. It wasn't forced. Why? Because there's a word sitting down in that person's spirit. And all I need is one word from the Lord. And it has the power to carry me through whatever I'm going through. That if God just speak one thing, it has the power to interrupt. Listen, when it's the word of the Lord, it comes with God's logic. Which means the logic of man says, you don't have the money for it. You can't afford it. It'll never happen. It's never happened for anybody in your family that when the logic of God steps in your mind you say I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me the logic of God disrupts demonic pathology hallelujah I feel the fire of God I don't know what number I'm on I think I'm on number four he watch this he talking about God honors his word above his name I didn't make that up. The Bible says he honors his word above his name. Yeah. Now, what does that mean? That he does respond when you holler out Jesus. But he honors even more when you can quote what he said. Yeah. Hollering out Jesus is powerful. He has a name that's above everything that's named. But because the word is God, when you begin to speak the word, you are speaking God. So when you begin to quote what, hallelujah, when you begin to quote what God said, he said, now nah, I got to do it for her. I got to do it for her because when she quotes my word, I must respond to my word. Do you not know not only that, but I'm going to add an extra one. Angels respond to the word of God. Listen, it said they respond to the word of God. It didn't say they respond to when God speaks. It said angels respond to the word of God. It didn't say they respond to when God speaks, which means no matter who's speaking it. If you open up your mouth, they are obligated to act as if God is talking. Because the moment you quote his word, glory to God. The moment you quote his word, angels must begin to move because they recognize that the sound that is coming out of your mouth represents the sound of him who sits upon the throne. And when you quote that word, angels begin to respond. Yes, yes, there's power in the name of Jesus. Yes, you can look at your child and say, I command you to be healed in the name of Jesus. But there is something powerful about when you look at him and say, but he was wounded for your transgressions and bruised for your iniquities and the chastised of your peace uh, was upon his shoulder and with his stripes uh, you are healed angels respond to the word of the Lord looking at the bills is, you can look at your bank account and say I command you to be filled in Jesus name and that's powerful but look at that bank account and say my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus look at that bank account and say for he hath given me power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant that he made with my forefathers look at that bank account and say Galatians 3 and 29 for if I be Christ then I am Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise I don't have to ask God for what's already mine all I gotta do is receive because if I got the word for it, the word has the power. Look at your neighbor say, know the word and let the word know you. I said, know the word and let the word know you. Somebody say, what bishop be energized off of? He must be on caffeine. That's what they got in that uh, Starbucks. All my Starbucks be decaffeinated. Elmo, am I lying? Everything I get from Starbucks ain't got no caffeine in it. So when you see me, I'll be hyping, spinning, and doing cartwheels when I come up in here. I'm jumping around because I'm half the word. I'm jumping off the word. I'm excited. I don't care what's going on. I'm excited. I'm pumped up off the word. What, 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 how is it that this church is, is, is barely, it ain't even four years old? And this church is already about to own a huge property. Ah. This church is already, uh, God has opened up a supernatural door for us. Mm. And they say that a church can't even own a property until you're at least five years old. Right. Right. And God will let you bypass time and systems. Because you got a leader that believes God's word. And if the Lord said that something is mine. Listen, I'm, I'm, I wish I could tell this like I feel like it. I just, I can't tell the full story, Pastor McCoy. I'm way till June, but I, I can't tell the full story. But look at his name and say, wherever the sole of your feet shall tread. 
the Lord will give it to you. I said, wherever the sole of your feet shall tread. Do you not know when they go to the county assessor's office in order to prove who the property belongs to, in order to prove who it belongs to, everything that's owned in this society, there's a title and a deed that belongs to it, which means if you can find the title and the deed, you have ownership. So how do I find the title and the deed? I find the title and the deed when I go to the word of God, because when I grab a hold of the word, the title and the deed says it's mine. His report says I am healed. His report says I am healed. I got a question for you tonight. Whose report will you believe? Somebody say we shall believe the report of the Lord. I shall believe it. What he said for me. God's word is going out and it can't come back for me. That's the last time I'm going to mess with it. I might get excited to grab it. Somebody say thank God for the word. Somebody say, thank God for the word. Yeah, no, no, no. Listen, this is for, just for one person in here. Just find somebody on the other side of the room, be ghetto, and say, it'll work if you work it. You got to work the word. Give me two more minutes. Number five. The word is a seed, and I'm going to stop here. The word is a seed. The Bible said that the sower soweth the word. The word is a seed. And if you understand the process of a seed and producing a harvest, a seed must go through several phases before it can produce fruit. Hallelujah. They take that seed, and they, the, 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 the planter, the gardener, scatters the seed about. And when he scatters the seed about, can I tell you something? The first thing, somebody get me. So who got John chapter 12 and verse 24? What does it say? St. John 12. Yes, St. John 12 and verse 24. St. John 12 and 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corner we fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. I want you to hear this. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto etern life eternal. Watch this. When you understand the seed of the word, when the seed is dispersed and released, when the seed goes out, the first thing it must do in the ground is it must die, yes. which means that the word has to have the power to kill you first. Yes, okay. Oh, Lord. The sword cuts backwards and forwards. Now, you like the word as a sword when it's coming against your enemy, but you don't like the word as a sword when it's coming against you. Okay. You like the word as a sword when it's coming against the devil, but you don't like the word as a sword when it's coming against you. And we know it because you shout whenever we talk about everybody else. But whenever correction comes to you and the sword comes to your row and the sword comes to your pew, then you're ready to leave the church. And it is not until the sword has the power to turn on you and cut you and tell you you lied right there and tell you you have a nasty attitude and tell you that you might be the witch of the day and tell you that you're operating under a Jezebelic spirit because you offended it in your feelings and now you off and loosen an off spirit in the house of God. Don't you know that the word has the power to cut backwards and forward, which means every word that comes out of your mouth has to have the same authority to come back and hit you. It has the same authority to come back and challenge you. And can I tell you something? You don't need a weak word. You need a strong sword that has the power to confront you and begin to cut things out of your spirit that does not look like God and begin to cut things out of your soul that does not look like God and begin to cut relationships out uh, that does not look like God. You need a sword and it is the sword of the spirit that has the power to begin to shape you and reshape you the seed must have the power to kill you which means every time you get a prophetic word every time you get a prophecy when the prophecy come to you jay that prophecy must have the power to kill who you used to be before that word because if the word has life in it then it only produces life where there must first be death I'm, quoting, I'm, I'm preaching from the text. I'm making this up. Which means that every time the Lord begins to tell you, you know, you're going to be a millionaire. And you fell out under the power and you rolled all over the house. And used up all the Kleenex. All of it. 
Sister Collins don't know where to clean that sack because you just <laughs> all of it. You done rolled all over. You done all the sheets. <laughs> when that happens, after you get up off the floor and after you get finished quickening and shouting, after you get done doing all that, then that word starts working against your negative spending habits. Yeah. It starts confronting the way that you have a relationship with money. Yeah. It starts confronting your, ins oh Lord Jesus have mercy. It starts confronting your insecurities. It starts confronting the spirit of poverty. If it's a real word. If it's a real word. Because remember, the rhema is the bucket. The logos is the whale. And the problem is, is that you got folks prophesying that have no relationship with the whale. But yet they always got a bucket. They on clubhouse buckets. All they got buckets, buckets. And they have no evidence of a whale. And we know it because you prophesy and you lay hands and you blow on people. But you refuse to pay your bills. And you think that's holy. And you think that's holy. It ain't holy. Because that word has the power to cut, cut backwards and forward. That seed must first die. The second thing, watch this. Is it must then, after it has died. The text said that Jesus Christ was buried. If he is the word and the word is a seed. After he died, he was buried. What does that mean? It must become one with the ground. After the seed dies, it begins to spread roots and become one with the ground. Which means that word has to become one with you. You got to become it. You got to become it. We got to see it. And the way we see it is that you plant it. The way that we, oh Lord. I ain't talking about being a member of 10 churches in one month. That's called a vagabond spirit. You ain't heard that word before? It's called a vagabond spirit. I ain't talking about being a member of 10 churches in one month. That's instability. I ain't talking about having 10 spouses in one year. That's instability. I'm not talking about having 10 houses in one year. That's instability. I'm not talking about having 10 cars in one year. That's instability. I'm not talking about having 10 best friends in one year. That's instability. And when people are unstable, it is a representation of their what? Mind. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Mind logic. Mind logic. Bad logic means instability. There's something wrong with the head. And the word needs to confront that head. That mind. And a mind that behind you. Anybody ever had the word confront your mind? Anybody ever used to be a little cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs? Anybody know that if the word ever slipped off of you, you, you might still be a little cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs? You ain't going to tell the truth. It's the word that's reconstructing my mind every day. Every day. You better thank God for the word. You better be glad I'm in the word. You better be glad. Listen, the old saints used to say, stay in the word. Don't go nowhere. Everything going down but the word of God. That's what the old saints used to say. After the word kills death, after you become one with it, burial, then you enter into the final stage, which is resurrection, which means everything that's been going on under the ground, the Lord will allow something to pop up, listen, and he'll begin to produce fruit out of your life, which means that after you have allowed the word to kill you for a season, I said a season, not just a day, not just one encounter, but sometimes you go through a season of death. You go through a season called death, but the Lord begins to deal with everything you thought you were, everything that you used to be, everything that you used to do, people that you used to hang out with. The old saints said, the places that I used to go, I don't go no more. The things that I used to do, I don't do no more because it's working from the inside out. Something on the inside.
working on the outside on what a change in my life it's because Jesus has stepped on the inside and his word has reconstructed my mind that's why the Bible says be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is acceptable and the will of God until you can be transformed in your logic you can't prove nothing until you've been transformed in your mind you can't prove nothing until you've been transformed in your head stop prophesying until you've been transformed in your head stop laying hands until you've been transformed in your head stop posting these facebook statuses sit down and let the lord transform you sit down and let the lord heal you sit down and let the lord feel you i want you to hear i feel god all over me but somebody say i got evidence somebody say i got evidence i'm not saying you don't have flaws i'm not saying you don't have issues but you ought to be able to look from the time you got the holy ghost you ought to be able to look from the time you got saved until now and see a change on the inside of your spirit you ought to be able to say the things that i used to do i don't do no more at least be able to say the things that i used to do i don't do as much anymore but think listen here you ought to be able to yell at me real you ought to be able to say he's producing a change in me he's doing something in me he's changing my appetite he's changing my desire he's changing my mind somebody say thank you for the word somebody say thank you for the word the old saints used to say thank god for jesus thank you for the word of the lord thank you lord for your word because if it wasn't for your word i'd still be out there doing something crazy i'd be in a strange place but here i am here i am in the house of god on a wednesday night because the word got a hold of me the old saint said something got a hold of me i went to a meeting one night and my heart wasn't right but something got a hold of me i want to tell somebody that you're coming into your resurrection season full of season of 2020 you felt like you were dying and some of you died on the inside you went through a storm and after you died look up here now i've been buried but i heard the word say that we've been buried with christ that we may reign with him that we've been buried with him through baptism being fully immersed in the name of jesus and once i've been immersed i've become one with him and his name according to revelation chapter 5 shall be written upon their forehead so when you see me you see jesus the more i eat the word the more i become here and when i pray i ascend to the spirit and the devil don't know if he's dealing with me or jesus christ himself because i look like him i sound like him i preach like him i pray like him somebody say lord make me over into your word make me over into your image and i shall be transformed and look just like him for we shall see him as he is when he cracks the cloud and he ascends down he descends down we shall see him as he is but we shall be just like him made in his image and in his likeness the word has the power to undo everything that the enemy has done look at your neighbor and say neighbor he's making you over he's changing your life he's fixing your mind stay right there until the lord heals you stay in the word until he feels you stay in the word until he kills you stay in the word until he feeds you stay in the word until he delivers you stay right there Somebody say thank God for his word. You're not going to tell your real testimony. But some of you, 
the Lord delivers you from drugs. Some of you. The Lord delivers you from stealing. Some of you. The Lord delivers you from lying. Some of you. The Lord delivers you from being a hoe. Some of you. The Lord delivers you from being a slut. Some of you. The Lord delivers you from fighting. But tell your neighbor, I haven't forgotten how to fight. I'm just fighting the right fight. I fight with the word. Put on the whole armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God that you may stand in that evil day. Put it on Zion. Put on the word which is your strength. Put on the word which is your power. Standing all over this house as we prepare to go. Everybody that the word is delivered. Everybody that the word is free. Everybody that the word is ever healed. If you ever been on a sick bed, if you ever thought you were gonna die, it was the word that resurrected you. And the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is alive on the inside of your spirit. It's alive on the inside of your soul. That word has the power to drive that death. That word has the power to keep you alive. Tell your neighbor, I'm on life support. Tell your neighbor, I'm on life support. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I'm being supported by Jesus. Therefore, I'm on life support. That's what's keeping me here. I'm on life support. He's all over me and he's keeping me alive. The word of God is alive. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. The binding of sunder. The sword of the spirit. Somebody say, thank God for the word. Father, we bless you tonight. We glorify you for the power of your word. We glory that Abandio so much for the power of deliverance. We thank you, Lord, for the power of your word. We thank you, God, tonight that you have bound back the hand of death. We thank you, Lord, that you have made ways out of no way. For even in our midst over the last three days, you have healed people from throat cancer. You've healed people from bone cancer. You've healed people from asthma. You gave people jobs. You open up the way. You open up the door. You open up the window. You have done what you said. And we are persuaded that you will continue to manifest your promises. For the promises of God are yea and amen. So we walk now in the it's already done anointing of God. We walk now in the it's already done dimension of God. We walk now in the dimension that says yes and it is so. Yes and it is so. We thank you now. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Getting ready to get out of here. Oh la 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 ba sha ta da ba so to ba ya. He na 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 ba ra ba ba su ra ga ta ya. Oh ra ga ta ma ni re be be su ra ba ta ya. Si ba re be be on do re be si ni ya ka ya. Oh God, God, I feel fire up in here. Pastor Brooks, I feel fire in here tonight. Brother Maurice, I feel fire in here tonight. I feel fire. It's all on the ground. Yeah, there's a word over your life. There's a word over your life. 
and that word is what kept you in the hospital is what kept you through the car accident is what kept you through the abuse and the pain is what kept you through your childhood there's a word 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 he gave me his word he sent his word and he healed me He sent his word and he healed me. He sent his word and he healed me. He sent his word. but just point to somebody point to their belly and say I command your word to work for you in the name of Jesus come on some of you got to get some power on you I command your word to work for you I command the word to work for you tonight I command the word in you to be stirred from you rivers rivers wells Lord out of our casa. you will not be clouds without water hallelujah you will not be clouds without water Jesus Jesus I want everybody in here to recommit to studying the scripture. Recommit today that it may shift your logic. I want everybody to get a seat this soul tonight as we prepare to go. Your word is alive. Your word is alive. Your word is alive. Your word is alive. Ay, ay, ay. Your word is alive. Your word is alive. Your word is alive. I feel an anointing right now. The 
word is fighting for many of you under this anointing. I feel a warfare anointing for many of you right now. Let's get a seed. Tithing wave with me. Stay right there. I feel a I feel a warfare anointing here. If you're tithing, wave with me. Those of you that are online that are tithing, type tithing. I lose the blessing of the Lord over you that make it rich and enter those sorrow with it. Supernatural windows and doors be open. In the name of Jesus for you, that as you tithe out of obedience to the word, the word must work for you. I decree it over your life now. In Jesus' name. Let's get our uh, operatory confessions. The horse and the rider, he's thrown in the sea. The horse and the rider, he's thrown in the sea. The horse and the rider, he's thrown in the sea. The horse and the rider, he's thrown in the sea. The horse and the rider, he's thrown in the sea. The horse and the rider, he's thrown in the sea. The the sea. Chariots of angels, angels of fire, chariots and angels. Angels of fire, chariots and angels, angels of fire, chariots and angels, angels of fire, the horse and the rider, he's thrown in the sea, the horse and the rider, he's thrown in the sea, the horse and the rider, he's thrown in the sea, the horse and the rider, he's thrown in the sea. One, two, three. As we proceed today's tithe, offerings, and first fruits, we declare that as a church, this is our breakout 2021 year. We call in all the necessary finances to build this church. We declare every powerhouse campus is out of debt, owners of much land, financial resources, and great wealth. We decree over every powerhouse family, jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and return, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, debts paid off, expenses decreased, blessings and increase, heavens open, earth invaded, storehouses unlocked, and miracles created, dreams and visions, angelic visitations, declarations, impartations, and divine manifestations. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all my financial needs, that I may have more than enough to give it to the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Money coming to the body of Christ. Money coming to me now. You are bringing me into my wealthy place. Father, we thank you now for bringing us into a nothing, nothing broken, increase. We thank you for it now in Jesus' name. All that agree said is so, and so it is. Bring that seed from all over this place. Horse and the horse and the rock. It's thrown in the sea. Horse and the rock. It's thrown in the sea. Chariots and angels. Angels of fire. Chariots and angels. Chariots and angels. Angels of fire. Chariots and angels. Angels of fire. Chariots and angels. Angels of fire. Angels of fire. The horse and the rock. It's thrown in the sea. The horse and the rock. It's thrown in the sea. The horse and the rider, he's thrown in the sea. The horse and the rider, he's thrown in the sea. The horse and the rider, this is Miriam's song, he's thrown. The horse and the rider, after they crossed the Red Sea, she said, The horse and the rider, he's thrown in the sea. The horse and the rider, he's 
Show me the sea. Show me it's an angel. Angels of fire. 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 Come on, son. The horse and the rider. He's thrown in the sea. The horse and the rider. He's thrown in the sea. The horse and the rider. He's thrown in the sea. The horse and the rider. 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 He's thrown in the sea. 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 Let's get ready to go. My God. Father, we honor you for what you've done in this place tonight. We give you the glory for that breakthrough anointing. We thank you for healing. We thank you for delivering. We thank you for setting the captive free. We give you the glory for what you're doing, for you are indeed in the midst of us. We thank you that you are opening up supernatural doors that no man can close. We've seen what you've done with the first half of this week. But you told us it would be seven days of miracles seven days of breakthrough so we know God that if you're moving for my neighbor and I was under the same word then that means me too so I receive it I receive it that the horse and the rock you, you have thrown it into the sea we glorify you tonight for the victory in the strong incomparable auspicious name of he who was dead but is now alive to Mary's baby, the son of David, the lily of the valley, the rose of Sharon, the mind regulator, the stone that the builders rejected, the one who bore my stripes upon his back, the perfect lamb, Adonai, Elohim, the wheel, in the middle of Ezekiel's wheel, the rose of Sharon, the many blessed one, we say in Jesus' name, it is so, and it shall not be otherwise. We declare it tonight that it is so, and it shall not be otherwise. In Jesus' 